Welcome back. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We're looking at education right now. We did yesterday. We'll continue today. Another round of crisis that may lead to another strike is looming in the public universities over the alleged inability of the federal government to conclude renegotiations with the universities uh, based unions on the 2009 agreement. This is as the Senior Staff Association of Nigerian Universities, SANU, has lamented that it has lost so many of its members as a result of the failure of the government to pay the full months of withheld salaries during the strike period. Record that the four university-based unions, SANU, the Academic Staff Union of University ZASU, the non-academic staff of allied and educational institutions, NASU, and the National Association of Academic Technologies, NAAT, had last year shut down public universities over the inability of the government to attend to their demands. Now, the Nigerian government has directed university lecturers under the Congress of University of Cornwall to submit the details to the Office of the Accountant General of the Federation for the payment of their withheld salaries. Now, this was made known in a letter dated January 13 and signed by the Director of Integrated Personal and Payroll Information System Department, Charles Wally. The letter was addressed to the Cornwall President Obafemi Awolowo University Chapter. Now, joining us now to discuss all of this is Professor Sani Fage, a political analyst. Many thanks for joining us, Professor Fage. Thank you very much. All right, it's as though there is no end in sight to the lingering issues that bedeviling the nation's um, ivory towers. Last year, the uh, Students were at home for over eight months because of uh, ASSO strike. We are all aware of that. Right now, the information we hear is not really a cheering one. Sano is actually lamenting, and they might be going on strike again. What is the way forward as it is now, Professor Fage? Yeah, the way forward is for uh, the government uh, to respond to the situation. You know, the, the whole thing is that there was an agreement, or there is still an agreement between the uh, government and uh, various unions in the university, and the agreement was due for renegotiations. And uh, like that of ASU, it has been, uh, you know, dragging on since 2009, now which makes it now 14 years. And the government will sit down and uh, renegotiate with uh, the ASU and other unions. And on the way forward, sometimes the government will back up and start to bring in, throwing hammer into the works. And uh, that is what uh, caused the whole delay. Now the government has also created another potential uh, problem, which is the register uh, CONWA. Uh, during the crisis. While the government fully knows that um, way back, I think, in 2013, when uh, an academic staff union of inter-university uh, centers uh, filed their application to be registered, the same ministry said it was illegal uh, for uh, them to register a, a, a splinter union within the within an, as any organization where there is an existing union. So you see that one created a, a lot of problem for government, and now it's going to quite uh, you know uh, the problem will continue. And the other thing now is uh, the government with its own divide and rule tactics is now trying to say they are going to pay. Uh, the splinter union that they created. So I think this will compound the problem. And the way out is for the government to sincerely come forward and discuss this issue and resolve it once and for all. Is there uh, the border language you see and the willingness on the part of government to want to resolve this issue? Because last year, sometime in December, ASO threatened 
you know, to take the federal government to court over the registration of um, Cornwa. Uh, you know, and uh, when the strike was called of last year, you know, what we hear was that um, no work, no pay. That's the what we heard next. And um, lecturers were groaning that um, they've not been paid uh, some arrears as it is right now. But with this new development, with the federal government wanting to negotiate right now with Cornwa and not ASU as it is, uh, don't you think it's um, actually a case of divide and rule? Yeah, that is what I'm saying. It's a divide and rule, which uh, usually doesn't succeed. Uh, you know, it will postpone the inevitable that is, uh, you know, coming together and resolving the problem between government and ASU for a, a, for, for a while, but it's not going to end the problem. On the contrary, it is going to compound the, the problem by registering uh, that uh, splinter group and now by saying they are going to work with, with that uh, splinter group. Already, I think uh, some are even starting to say, OK, uh, this is uh, going to be a good thing for, uh, for us, uh, because once the government decided to register to pay them, then there is a legal basis for us to challenge uh, the whole thing. And um, the other thing is the government knows very well that negotiation is the only way out and the most stable uh, solution, I mean, permanent solution to uh, the problem. But the government, in its own wisdom, uh, in order to delay the whole process, went to court and get the court to compel us uh, to go back to work. And now, we have covered uh, the, the ground that we lost. Already some of us have even conducted exam. You know, we are on the verge of exam when we went for strike. We have covered this thing. And uh, now we are trying to cover the past semester that we, uh, we lost. So I think with this, uh, doing the work in areas, the government has no justifiable reason to say that it is going to apply uh, the no work, no pay. But whatever it is, I think the stance that the government has taken will uh, create more problems and compound the existing situation that we are. Because already, uh, if you look at the situations of universities, uh, the scene is drastically going down. The standard is drastically going down. I know of a department where over 80% of the lecturers have left. So in this situation, what, what do you think? It's either you shut down the uh, department or uh, you go and hire uh, uh, new people and put them there, which in any way will uh, compound the problem, like I said. So, um, Professor Sani, uh what then would be the implication of all of this? I mean, you have talked about the stance of government. What is the bigger picture? How does this affect the educational system and, you know, the bigger society at large? Yeah, I think, I think it's, 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 uh, it is affecting the uh, educational system. It is also affecting the society at large. But dragging the problem will uh, affect it more. Because now we are seeing, we are having, we have a chance uh, to head up the potential problem at this moment. If there is a sincerity of purpose, if the government and the, the, the uh, union leaders will come together and sit down, I think we can salvage it. But by the time the government is dragging the proce uh, process unnecessarily, uh, it is going to be more dangerous and disastrous for uh, the society. Because already now, you see, uh, one of the things that ASU is talking about is the issue of peace that is going to be increased and so on. The government has been denying it, but gradually, uh, you know, uh, some universities are now responding to what uh, the government wanted them to do in terms of raising the, the peace. And students are groaning. So, you see, uh, are now groaning. Uh, eventually, if this thing has not been uh, addressed, what is likely going to happen, there will be a riot, student riots all over the country. And uh, then uh, it will be more dangerous. We already have so many violent crises in, uh, you know, uh, on ethnic and religious basis. 
uh, you know. But now, when you add up with that of uh, the student, I don't think uh, that will augur well for any government, whether this one or the government that is going to succeed it. All right, so what should ASU be doing in the immediacy? Because somehow, if you look at it, uh, their salaries are going to be paid in a way. I mean, their arrears, although the government is not going to pay them through ASU, uh, through their union, but through another union. Would you say it's a, a bit of a win situation in as much as they're getting paid, but not through the union? Or what else can they possibly do, ASU that is? No, I think, I think even if uh, the government pays through the Splinter Union, ASU will not accept it. Mm -hmm. Because that is amounting to a total defeat of uh, ASU. You know, if you now create another union and say, go and get your salary through that one, I don't think ASU will do it. Many people, uh, the way the government is, has uh, handled the thing, will not join onward. You see, the option to many people is either they leave the service, some, uh, you know, are on that position. The other, they leave the service if they are to be forced to join the CONWA or to stay without a, a union. But uh, what I foresee is that uh, paying it through CONWA, uh, like I keep on repeating, is going to create mountains of problems uh, for the system. And uh, uh, that, like I said, is not going to go well uh, for the system. So uh, at this point, uh, there's been a lot of conversation about having the private sector, you know, involved in the educational system. Do you think that this would go a long way in addressing uh, the situation that we're faced with? Um, it will not, uh, because if you look at what happened, uh, what is happening now with say uh, the, uh, the education at lower level, like uh, from primary to secondary level, where you have. Um, a private sector uh, heavily involved in that in this area, it hasn't solved the problem. What it did is to uh, lower the standard because uh, their own concern is to gain. It is an investment and they are there to gain, so they are not very much concerned with the standard of uh, the education. That is one thing. Secondly, if you look at and uh, the average Nigerian, about 80 or 60 percent of Nigerians are living below poverty. Now, if you now put education, what you are saying is you are automatically excluding the sons and daughters of the poor people. And that will create the gap between the haves and the have not. And eventually, when you disenfranchise or you, 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 uh, you disempower, a, a large chunk or segment of the society, you are now creating, a, you are now putting a potential time bomb, which, when it explodes, uh, nobody will know, know, will know the end of it. I mean, knows the end of it. All right. But, Go ahead, okay. Mercy. I mean, uh, just quickly, I'd like to ask if it's possible to avoid another strike as a nation in terms of the educational sector now. Is it possible for us to avoid another strike? Yeah, I'm optimistic that it is possible. All it takes is for, for the government now to sit down and uh, uh, negotiate. When, when you negotiate, all the, the things that uh, the union are asking is not something that you have to do it uh, uh, once uh, in, a, in a day. It's something that will take time to do, like uh, the funding of the system. is something that it will take four years, six years for you to uh, put on the funds. And uh, the government is there. You cannot destroy the educational system. This is one of the implications. You cannot uh, destroy the uh, system of education, and you expect your country to develop. As the saying goes, no nation develops above its level of education. So the, the sooner the better for the powers to, uh, uh, to uh, now to come down and uh, think of this. It is not something that is of pride. I think what uh, is creating this thing is just a pride and seek up and see, you know, people are planning the government that you are in power. How can you be a challenge and so on? But even the military, 
were willing to sit down and negotiate. And here we are, ironically, this is a democratic government, which is not, it's more militaristic than even the military in terms of negotiating with uh, the association. So we have to look at the, the, the nation and the, the future of our children. And we, we have to look at that one and forget all other things uh, and come down and uh, sit down. But I think, to me, uh, the whole thing is uh, the, the government is being prompted by powers outside. Uh, we have uh, World Bank and IMF. This is their own agenda. And so the government is taking that one. And uh, that is why, you see, they took, uh, they take a drastic uh, U-turn. Uh, remember, before they were in power, uh, the president, uh, the minister of education, and uh, all the people now who are saying they, they will not uh, negotiate or they will not uh, pay this. When they are outside the power, they were pro ASU. They, they had the view that, yes, what ASU and other unions are taking is, is a patriotic concern uh, to develop the uh, educational sector. And now that they are in power, because they are being uh, pushed and tell guided from outside, they have taken a U-turn. And I think uh, the, the sooner the better for all concerned, uh, the government and the stakeholders too. The, you know, uh, we shouldn't just be between us who, I mean, the union and the government, stakeholders too, like the parents, like the students and the other well wishes. Uh, where Nigerians should come and intervene and see that this thing is resolved, uh, you know, even in war situation. The All right. final All right, end Professor Fage. negotiations. Speaking of negotiation, as we round off um, this conversation right now, Sano uh, just held um, its uh, 42nd National um, Executive Council, and they are asking for the immediate or demanded the immediate resumption and renegotiation of the 2009 agreement. Let's leave uh, the outstanding salaries for one moment because we have talked uh, extensively concerning that. The other issues in the 2009 agreement are yet to be finalized uh, as it is right now. It also called off um, its strike last year, hoping that the negotiations would continue. But as it is right now, nothing has actually or has seemingly uh, been done concerning some of the demands um, raised uh, by ASU, SANU, and um, the affiliated unions. Uh, so as we round off now, so what should we be doing in the immediacy? You see, uh, uh, what we should be doing is not only to use the negotiation as a delay tactics. Uh, we should negotiate and then implement what has been negotiated upon. Uh, this is the only way forward, and I think the government has the key to it, because they are the ones who will negotiate, and they are the ones who are going to implement it. So like I said, implementation takes time. It is not like a, a one-year thing. If you look at the seven demands of us, these are things that will have taken long. Uh, you know, the reason why we were able to succeed in 2009 was when the Eradua uh, administration honestly negotiated and started implementing. Had it been the 2009 agreement has been implemented, I don't think I uh, will ever see strike uh, of this nature. There could be disagreement here and there, but there, there could not be a, a nation, nationwide uh, strike like what is happening now. All right. Thank you so much. Indeed, uh, we have been speaking with um, Professor Sani Fagi, political analyst, and we have been looking at all of the issues concerning ASU, SANO, CONWA, uh, UTAS, and IPPS as it is, and of course the 2009 agreement. We'll leave that conversation as it is right now. Thank you so much, Professor Fagi. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, it's still uh, breakfast on Plus TV. Merci. Where are we headed after now? Well, we'll definitely take a break, and when we return, we'll be looking at the issue of climate change, uh, all of the suggestions for adoption, adaptation, and what have you. Stay with us. We'll be right back.